So today I'll talk about integration of machine learning uh, into potential communicant utility using uh, chest radiographs and computed tomography images. Uh, let's go over the agenda of today's presentation. First, uh, we will talk about machine learning methods in general, which uh, might be deployed in the clinics. Then we will talk uh, uh, over the problems which usually incur during that. And after that, we will see the main workflow uh, of machine learning algorithm uh, development uh, in terms of data collection, labeling methods, and model validation. After that, I'll see some recommendations uh, which um, we have uh, based on our personal experiment and public reviews. Finally, I'll talk about myself, what I'm doing, and yeah, let's get started. So, uh, machine learning methods offer a great promise for fast and accurate detection and prognosis. Pregnant, uh, classification of coronavirus disease 2019, cancer detection from uh, standard of care chest radiographs and uh, chest computed tomography images. Many articles already have been published in 2020 describing new machine learning based methods, but practice shows that no one of the models identified is uh, of clinical potential utility. In order to explore the existing problems which prevent this, uh, there were done a lot of experiments and reviews. Uh, uh, yeah, investigations uh, show that the main uh, problems which encounter uh, during uh, deployment are the variability of large international open source data set and then the geographical standards of uh, the countries in which patients have been considered during data collection. After that, the labeling methods of the collected data set uh, has a lot of problems. Uh, imagine you have already collected your data and labeled it. Now the idea is to train some neural network algorithm and uh, get desirable model. But here's the question is how to choose that model, uh, the final model, as there are several algorithm approaches which could be used for diagnostic or prognostic purposes. And the last uh, problem which we have is the absence of external validation, means the necessity for clinicians and data scientists, data analysts to work side by side to ensure the developed uh, AI algorithms are clinically relevant and implementable, let's say, into routine clinical care. Uh, all right, now as we see the problems which we can have during uh, machine learning uh, algorithm development, uh, let's see the general workflow, uh, which is usually is being uh, done by researchers and research groups. What they do, they take some existing approaches and uh, in terms of neural network, do training on a public data set, get the desired score, but the practice shows that this is not sufficient enough to get an AI model uh, which will be used in the clinics and help doctors to make uh, trustful and accurate decisions for any patient. The problems vary from country to clinic, from the patient demographical features to a device that has been used for patient, um, uh, chest radiographs, images collection. So uh, the problem is to define such a workflow that uh, will allow us to get a model for general usage and purposes. Uh, here are some examples of public and private data set. Uh, you can see that we have uh, opportunity to get public already collected and labeled data set. But even in this case, for example, the uh, TCIA team of well-known like, uh, 
city public data set, team strongly encourages users to review that uh, data set, like DICOM representations and the annotations included in this data set before developing custom tools uh, to analyze lung cancer at early stages. Also, uh, reviews show that the, uh, for example, NIH chest data set has a lot of duplications in terms of images. So we can see that even we have already labeled and collected public data set, it is not sufficient to use them. It needs to be reviewed and a reviewer can't be a usual data scientist. It should be someone who is aware about this stuff like clinicians. After data collection, what we need to do is data labeling. High quality, uh, it's evident that high quality training data is the key to building machine learning models and helps to improve medical image based diagnosis. However, a great challenge in this field, as I mentioned, is the lack of high quality training data. Specifically, medical Im imaging annotations uh, have to be performed by clinical specialists which is costly and time consuming. Uh, there are two options to do that data labeling. Now, uh, the first one, it can be done manually by the research team. Uh, imagine you need to develop a model which will identify uh, like cats or dogs. In this case, the researcher can easily uh, label the, the already collected data, but uh, it is clear that the same logic cannot be applied to medical data. So a research team in this case should be consist, should be having clinical too. Uh, the next approach which can be uh, used for data labeling is already uh, developed automated annotation tools. There are some open source tools which can be uh, used, uh, but uh, in any case, after marking up using those tools, uh, data it is needed to be reviewed by clinicians. So uh, let's assume we have done uh, data labeling, data collection, and now collected and pre-processed data is uh, ready uh, to be trained. The idea is to train some neural network algorithm and select the final one, which will be used for further purposes. After selecting the best model uh, based on some theoretical criteria, uh, we must take care of validation in order to see uh, what is the behavior of the uh, model of the artificial intelligence on data which hasn't been used um, during model development. Uh, there are two approaches for validating the performance of uh, Mm, algorithm, namely, namely internal and external uh, validation. For internal validation, the, the test data uh, are from the same source as the development data. And for external, they're, uh, they're from different sources, including um, like both internal and external validation allows to, uh, to more like insights to generalize that algorithm, which is already trained. Uh, and here I would like to mention that external validation has to be done by clinicians in order to see, in order to have side by side uh, collaboration with research researchers like data scientists in order to see the drawbacks and uh, like advantages of already collected preprocessed pre-processed data uh, after training. Okay, uh, we see that uh, the main flow is to collect uh, label data and then uh, try to uh, teach, to train artificial intelligence in order to have a more accurate result. But here we saw that there are a lot of problems in terms of collection, data collection, and data labeling. 
the uh, personal experiments and already uh, public reviews shows that there are some recommendations which will help to avoid previously mentioned uh, issues and it will help to get a model for uh, potential clinical utility. It's like get a real data that will be marked up by doctors. Uh, we can, of course, we can use public data sets too, but uh, we need to take into account the geographical standards of the countries, uh, like in which patients have been considered during that data collection. After that, each training should be done external validation based on doctor's decisions. So we need to have a team uh, which will work directly with doctors and clinicals. And uh, finally, why I'm talking uh, about this stuff, uh, now I'm a PhD student at Russian Armenian US University collaborate, collaboration with um, Espresso Laboratory. Uh, now we are trying to analyze uh, lung and uh, somehow breast cancer at early stages. We are at research phase in order to get more insights um, directly working clini uh, clinicians uh, about data collection, their needs. After that, uh, like having successful da data, collected data, we need to label them. And for that purpose, we, we need, of course, um, doctors. And, and uh, the idea is uh, to develop and validate model, artificial intelligence model, in order to see how we can use it in uh, real life, like to help doctors to make decisions, because uh, for in this case, in my case, the early detection of cancer is very challenging. Uh, uh, and uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any question. Yes, Chinar. Uh, in chat, we have a question. Uh, do you collaborate with any organization that produced thermographic equipment or applications for imaging processing? Uh, you mean uh, devices? Thank you for for question. Uh, just uh, the question is uh, collaboration with uh organization uh, uh, where yeah, they do like, it. like general electric, uh, philips siemens uh. oh no no at this point for example when we are working with yerevan clinics they already have equipments in terms of devices that they can they use for data like patient uh ch checking let's say and at this point we are uh, using them Mm -hmm. uh, and did you check uh, the differences between uh, different um, tomographic, uh, computer tom tomographic systems? Yeah, of course, of course, the question is a very good question because it uh, depends on what kind of device I mentioned that geographical standards are uh, like matter too. And here, of course, device um, is also important to take into account. At this point, uh, the first experiments, as uh, we are doing this work, like for uh, four or five months, at this point, we are trying to use uh, like a device which we have. After that, of course, we need to uh, like uh, do the same experiments, validation uh, on data, which will be um, like uh, received by another device. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, do you have a team that's uh, making a uh, masks for images for training? Um, is, yeah, this is the duty of clinicists. Mm -hmm. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we are uh, working with doctors, and that fast that uh, data labeling part, segmentation, or 
I don't know, annotation is being done by doctors. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are several public data set. We have gone over them also, but at this point, we need to collect and uh, label by our own because uh, that will support, that will uh, help us to get uh, more efficient artificial intelligence model for general usage. Mm -hmm. And the last question about the metrology of uh, this equipment, uh, do you take in account the quality control of uh, devices? Quality control, yeah, I guess this question, uh, we had this kind of question, yeah, of course, now we are, uh, the, the equipment, the devices which we use is uh, uh, like have a very high uh, quality in terms of like uh, what kind of quality data we can get them and uh, in clinics, uh, those uh, devices are like uh, uh, are being provided by uh, clinics. Of course, we uh, we take into account that fact too. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks a lot for your presentation. Um, so uh, if we will have any uh, new questions to, to, to you, we will get uh, cross with you and to, uh, uh, get an answer from you and put it in the chat.